I mean, you work there like during like the golden age, you know, like during yeah. the dot com boom. You worked at Verisign, which is a huge company, and then you work for two really big game development companies. So, you've you've been through job interviews, and you've interviewed people as well, because I know we've had conversations before. Um, so, when you interview someone who wants to be a game designer, um, what are some of the things that you look for? As far as interviewing goes, I'm usually involved with uh, interviews for other programmers or other engineers sometimes managers and sometimes designers designers only when when it comes to the, the domain that you're working in so when i when i worked on madden and ncaa and and nhl and 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 all the other titles i've worked on i was usually the audio engineer so whenever we needed somebody to work on audio that was new that was coming in they would ask me to do the interview even though it was not always programming or engineering based so depending on the domain that you're in, uh, you can do interviews for various roles. Um, interviews for other engineers, it really depends on on their level, meaning are they fresh out of college? Are they an intern? Is it someone that has 20 years of in industry experience? Is it somebody that has experience programming but not in the game industry? So we look at a number of things, and then we look at the role that is being interviewed for. And then we try to ask questions that are pertaining to role. The questions, uh, I mean, people get scared and intimidated for interviews, as as do I. I've I've certainly had my shares of, of interviews. But what what mostly is being looked for are two things. One, your resume. Don't ever, ever put on your resume something that you're not uh comfortable with to the level that you expressed being comfortable with i can't tell you how many times we've had people come in like expert c plus plus programmer and they don't even know what an abstract class is or they don't even know how the virtual functions work or or, or anything like simpler in, in c plus plus and you go like okay can you give me an example of what you've done in c plus plus well i read an article about it great please don't put on your resume that you're an expert c plus plus programmer so so th this may seem obvious right but i have talked to to some recruiters and and they ask people if you have been exposed to anything just put it on your resume and and it could be good to get attention but it's usually really bad when you put something well usually it's it's guaranteed bad if you put something on your resume and then you can't answer a question about it so that's that's the first thing that's that's super important and the other thing is you have to accept the fact that you are going to be asked questions that you don't have the answer to or even questions that after spending some time on it you're not going to solve some people do some people don't but what what interviewers typically look after is how do you go about solving the problem? What is your process? Because if I ask you a question, for example, if I ask you, hey, design me an MP3 player, how would you lay out the classes? How would you couple all the various classes? How would it work together? How would you define the interfaces? Things like that. If I were to ask that, you may come to an answer, you may not come to an answer, but if I see the process that you follow, then I can tell from that process, okay, you didn't find the answer now, but I know you would have in the next half hour or an hour. Sometimes people get to an answer and, and I look at how they got there and it leaves me wondering, do they actually know what they're talking about? Or was it sheer luck? Or because their process doesn't make sense to me. So so usually you look at the resume and you look at the, the thought process that people follow to get to an answer. And it, it tells you a lot about, about people. And sometimes if people ask a question and you don't know the answer, it's okay to say like, look, I, I don't know. I would have to look this up or I would have to look into that because I don't know. And that's okay. It's better than sitting there for 15 minutes rambling on something that, that, that leaves both of you wondering, like, <laughs> what are you actually talking about here? <laughs>